Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, magicbrad.com. And I've got a new guest on the line. His name is Mark, and I'm going to try and pronounce the last name. Let's see. I think it's Mawini, right? You're pretty close. Mawini. Ma but close enough. Mawini. So more like an I than an E. More you Winnie. You call me Magic Mark. It's kind of like Magic Mike or whatever that That's right, called. but I don't know how to dance. All I can do is magic yeah. tricks. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what part of town... You don't want telling... <laughs> Me either. This is a different kind of show. So, so what part of town are you from, Mark? I'm on the east coast of Canada, so I'm in the city of Moncton, New Brunswick. We're right Canada, next door to the state of Maine, so we're getting lots of snow. Well, we're kind of neighbors. I'm in Minnesota, so we border each other. Yeah. Well, you know, you know all about snow. I do. It's, it's, we've got it here. We call it Minnesota. <laughs> but it's also called the Minneapolis because we're kind of like New York, a little mini New York. <laughs> Looks like a cool spot. So, and um, I followed I follow baseball, so it was cool. The Twins back in what the early '90s were pretty good with Kirby Puckett and all those guys. Yeah, they even won the World Series back in like '70s. I think two or two years in the late '80s, early '90s. I think something they won like a couple times. Yeah. Woohoo! I'm not a big sports fan. My brother made me a bumper sticker that says "Go Twins and take the Vikings with you." <laughs> <laughs> and then the Lakers went down to L.A. and the North Stars went to. Texas. Dallas, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. The North goes south and the Lakers go where They're there's no lakes. All over the place, yeah. We lost our Montreal Canadiens, went down to Washington. Uh, sorry, Montreal Expos. I wish the Canadiens would leave. But the Montreal Expos <laughs> went to uh, Washington to become the Washington Nationals. So How does that work? It's hard to keep track of where all the teams are going in sports. I can't. I watch the little UFC fights and, and comedy is <laughs> what I watch. So tell us what you do. I believe you're in the realm of coaching, correct? I am, yeah. I always get a chuckle when I say I'm a coach who coaches coaches, and people say, what the heck's that? Ba basically, make a long story short, I help coaches get more clients, and it's without paid advertising. So I'm, uh -huh. the stuff I do is organic. It's not, okay, dump thousands of dollars into Facebook ads and Google and all this stuff. It's all organic. But that's what I do. Very cool. And I'm uh, I'm an advocate of coaches. My wife is a coach, and I have yeah, cool. a coach that works more as a massage therapist. Whenever I have issues, we sit down mm -hmm. and talk for an hour, and then we get into deep tissue massage. Right. But um, I think it's important that a person has someone to reflect back, because oftentimes we can't see our own stuff. So you got to have <clears throat> the coach. I agree totally. I, I'm unbiased, but I think everyone should have a coach. Even <laughs> coaches, because they get in their own little ruts. So I totally get that. And I think it's really cool that you do that organically because then you're bringing the human factor back into things as opposed to using technology and Facebook ads and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and not, not to knock Facebook ads and stuff, but it can you can get a little lazy if you jump out of the gate and you say, okay, I'm going to spend thousands of dollars just pumping people through this you know, Facebook ad to a webinar and stuff, and you're not creating content, you're not working those content creation muscles, you're not talking to your marketplace as much, so... It can definitely be done where you can build it organically, just it does take effort. It's not get rich quick or four hour work week type stuff, but that's how I built my business. I'm in my fifth year and the first four years was mostly all organic. Now I'm getting into some more Facebook ads, but organic will always be a big part of what I do. Do you do a lot of blogging? I do daily emails to my list. Okay. And technically I copy them over to my blog, but essentially my blog is my daily emails. And Perfect. people hear daily emails, they think, oh, my God, that's crazy. But I've been doing it for two years. I'm a huge fan of it. It's um, completely changed my email results, which were nil before I started doing that early 2016. Daily emails, I highly recommend that for entrepreneurs. I'm in total agreement. I do the same thing. Um, cool. I, I did lax, lap on it, lax on it a little bit, and I'm getting back into it. But the reality is if they like you, they want to hear from you every day. If they don't like you, they'll unsubscribe, and you move yeah. on. The approach I take, it's kind of like that movie with Clint Eastwood. I think it was, um, which one was it with him with the rifle in the front yard, the one with the race car? Oh, God. <laughs> Gran Torino, I think it okay. was. I, I'm kind of like Clint Eastwood, the grouchy old guy on the front lawn chasing away the people who aren't my ideal clients. So daily emails will chase away the people who probably wouldn't have bought from you anyways. Yep. But those that stick around, you'll have a much stronger I'm in agreement. I knew a guy used to say they either buy, die, or unsubscribe. There you go. But so many people are uh, concerned about numbers. They would rather have a larger list with nobody buying just so they can say, oh, I've got 5,000 people on my list, but no one's buying. I would rather see you have a list of 1,000 raving fans you yep. know, that you're emailing daily and that are uh, you have a strong relationship to as opposed to 5,000 
where it's just crickets. Well, I think we're going to get along just fine. I'm an advocate of that also. Maybe there's something we could do as a series or something and kind of shake it up. Because everybody's thinking, you know, I've got 22,000 people following me on Twitter. No, you yeah. don't. <laughs> <laughs> It would be nice, wouldn't it, if they were all engaged and they weren't bots or God knows what. Uh, but, yeah, that's a whole other topic I could talk about. It is. Um, I, I'm on there. I have 60,000 followers, but I get wow. more business from Facebook than I do from Twitter. I can yep. count on one hand how many clients directly came from Twitter last year compared to Facebook. Do you remember the platform called Blab? I do. I used to yeah. use Blab. Yep. Rest that in used, peace. It <laughs> used to I used be to good. Use Blab. I liked it. It was kind of an interaction. The techies got a hold of it and put too much, so oh, we should put PayPal buttons on here. No! Yeah. <laughs> use it as communication. Yeah. It, it was a cool, definitely a cool channel. I, I was disappointed when that, that whole platform died, but I guess I uh, was that too. happens. That, and that's why it's important not to get too, um, put all your eggs in one basket, because then if all of a sudden it dies, you're done, right? Yep. So I know some people that are putting themselves out on Blab and they're, lab experts and that was all their business that's why i like having an email list because you control your email list so exactly Zuckerberg decides tomorrow to kill facebook not that that's going to happen you still have your email list but but even so even if it doesn't happen you get your email list and it's your list and you can you know how to use it and then when facebook changes its algorithms you don't have to yeah. relearn anything you just send your emails out the way you send the emails out it's a matter of, exactly. i love it so far i like it <laughs> round of applause <laughs> there we go <laughs> So I also like to find out, um, like, how do you do your work? Do you do it in person or do you just do everything online? Because some people just yeah. do online, that's it. Yeah, I am not a what I call a Starbucks coach where I want to work with people locally, sit down at the coffee shop and stuff. I don't do any local business or any advertising. It's all completely online with people from away. So most of my clients are in your wonderful country or they're overseas. I have a few in the UK and even Australia, India, and so on. Any clients who've come to me local, it's been more by accident. They've heard uh, Natural Born Coaches, my podcast, and they've reached out to me that way. But even with the local clients, I'm doing my calls on Zoom or Skype. We're not meeting, like I said, at the local coffee shop. And I see that thing in the background. It's got a glare on it, but it says Natural Born Coaches. That's your yeah. podcast? We actually have sun in Canada in the winter, believe it or not. I should close the blinds. Yeah, Natural Born <laughs> Coaches is my podcast. So that's been okay. up and running since 2014. We've done, as of today, almost 550 interviews with successful coaches just to hear, hear how they're making a go of it and get their tips and secrets. So it's been a lot so of let fun. So me, let me ask you this. Do you sometimes get confused with, like, like baseball coaches or little league coaches or soccer coaches and stuff? <laughs> All the time. Yeah. I, especially locally, because I'm in a very conservative, traditional part of the world. It's getting better, but it's still very much, it, when people meet you, they want to put you in a box. Are you an insurance guy? Are you a real estate guy? Yeah. I've been real estate for a decade, so everybody pigeonholed me. They still think I'm in real estate, even though I haven't done it for years. Uh, or they want to, are you a ba in banking or whatever? And it was, so when they say, what do you do? And I say, I'm a coach. Or like I said at the beginning of this interview, I'm a coach who coaches coaches. I just get a blank look on their face. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to have to start bringing a whiteboard to explain what I do. But they do, they think I'm going, oh, gee, are you trying to make it into the NBA as a coach or something <laughs> like that? I'm like, no, nothing to do with athletics. Yeah. It's getting better. It's been a big change in um, since 2014 when I started. Now more and more people are getting to know. It's kind of like podcasts. Right. A lot of people around here didn't know what podcasts were five years ago. Now they're starting to get into them and listen to them. So right. it's, it's not California here for sure. Yeah, my wife used to be a teacher at the University of Minnesota. She taught Spanish. So when she got into coaching, it was like a natural transition mm. into it because teachers are kind of coaches a little yeah. bit. So. That's the whole natural born coaches. She's probably a natural born. So <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people have probably been coaching for years. They just don't realize it. Mm -hmm. So my background was in real estate. I did that for a decade through my 20s. I built up a brokerage with 100 agents and employees. I didn't know what coaching was. But now that I look back, I'm like, yeah, I was actually coaching people through there. So that, that's a great thing about this business. A lot of people can transfer over. If they want to make a switch with what they're doing currently, they're probably well positioned to become a coach. You don't have to get into fancy credentials and all the certification stuff. You I agree. can do that if you want, but uh, it's not necessary. I agree. If you're the kind of person that can help people through things and all that. So I don't like to do these too long because people have you know things they got to do with their busy lives. So this is just more of an introduction to what it is you do. But before I ask my favorite question, I'd like to see if there's, do you have anything that you can offer people? Do you have like a uh, complimentary 
Go yeah, on. well, spe- speaking of coaching, I've got an ebook on my website. It's okay. called The Real ABCs of a Successful Coaching Business. So it's 26 business building lessons to help you with your coaching if you're an aspiring coach or a current coach. And if you go to naturalborncoaches.com, you can opt in and get it there. That's an easy one to remember, naturalborncoaches.com. Not like naturalbornkillers.com. You won't get to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different business. <laughs> yes. It's Italian. <laughs> we'll get to Oliver Stone there. But, I mean. <laughs> so here's my favorite question. That's the big W. It's a big why. Why do you do this? Why aren't you like a little league coach? Or why aren't you like a ski instructor or a, or a Canadian tour operator? Well, I went skiing once in my life and everyone in my class in junior high were breaking their bones and breaking their legs. So I wasn't even venturing off the bunny hill that okay. time. So that's to answer your question about skiing. But uh, to make a long story short, the reason I'm doing it is I went through a business closure with my real estate business. I was on top of the world. Everything was going great for a decade. And then bang, I actually had two business closures in the span of a couple of years. And I was helped back to my feet by a couple different coaches and mentors. And that's how I saw, wow, this is really powerful stuff because they helped get me back on track. I want to do this for a business going forward. So in a nutshell, that's why I do it. Got it. You kind of got squeezed out of your old stuff. It's interesting because uh, what seemed like a bad thing back then was actually a good thing now. Right. I could see that, hey, it's, I wouldn't be talking to you today had that not happened. At the time, you feel like the world's ending, right? Yeah. But um, that, there's a lot of people out there that are just staying clinging to, attached to a business or a job that, or a relationship that they shouldn't be in any longer just because they've always done it. True. And you got to realize that you, you know it's uh, there's a lot of opportunities out there, but you got to let go of some of those things to grasp them exactly it's kind of like the monkey bars you got to let go of one and go to the other one right i do it can be scary but you got to do it (laughs) well i had a similar situation where why i got into affiliate marketing and internet (laughs) marketing because it's uh, the location freedom and the time freedom and i got into it because i was doing an exposition business and i had a minor stroke and i thought well i'm not going to die in this office so i (laughs) sold all my shares in the business and Decided to just get into internet marketing. So most of my business I do via the phone. You know, I just, I'm a mobilepreneur kind of like. That's the way to do it. I went to That's Mexico right. a few weeks ago. I, I was able to do my business from down there. Not too much, but I, I did a bit of biz, uh, work every day. But um, I was able to stay on top of things right from there. And what other business can you actually do that where you can exactly. go away? And I love not being tied down to a local market. Like a lot of people don't realize you can just talk into your phone to create your email and then just mm. push send and your email is gone. You know? Exactly. So there, it is there. I think people get into the techie part, and I like what you're doing too. Again, the uh, organic thing where you're not using too much tech. You're using, yeah. you're taking advantage of the technology, but not trying to make it run everything. Right. So, anyways, I appreciate you taking the time. So it's naturalborncoaches.com. That's how you get a, how you get a hold of Mark. Wonderful. And if you well, want to thanks, do it. Brad. If you want to do another one of these down the road, we could possibly do that. I would a, love to kind of topic. We'll talk baseball or stripping or whatever. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's just it's all about lifestyle, you know. Yeah, I'd love to come back. Because that, that's what I do with this now. The reason it's called Synergy Cafe is when I share this up there, when you see it out and about, if you would share it also, and that helps. Uh, rising tide lifts all boats. Will do. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Peace. Be well. Right. Thanks, Brad. Take care.